Welcome to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. I'm, I'm Connie Whitman, your host. Now, every week as you guys uh, check in and, and come and listen to the show, I hope that my guests and myself are providing some real valuable content for you on your road to navigating change, whatever change that might be. So hopefully we can help you build client relationships. Hopefully we can help you scale your business perhaps. Hopefully we can change your inner self-talk and maybe at the end of the day, really help you create the life that you desire and that you really do deserve. So that's the point of the show. So my motivational quote today is by Maddie Mullins and Maddie, girl or boy, says, the only person you should strive to be better than is the person you were yesterday. So would you uh, say that you are a positive or a negative thinker? You know, do you look at your glass as half full or half empty? And think about your state of mind at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Um, do you feel alive and happy and engaged and just raring to go when you wake up? And at night, when you, when you lay your head on that pillow, do you look back on your day and think, wow, that was a really great, productive day? Now, all of these questions that I just asked, they really matter, and they will help you um, to where you may be derailing yourself or uncover where you're derailing yourself without even understanding why your life is not probably what you hope it to be. So of course I have an amazing guest today. She's on, I think this is her second or third time on the show, my beautiful, wonderful friend, Nancy Solari. And she is an authentic, passionate, and successful example, truly, of how you can live the, the life you want with the right mindset and foundation, regardless of the challenge you face with perseverance and desire for greatness, you can begin to live full, living full out. Now, Nancy's a best-selling author and a renowned um, speaker in business success, right? In business success and personal uh, motivation. As a life coach, uh, she has empowered people to overcome their physical and emotional challenges and achieve whatever those goals are that you desire. And Nancy, when Nancy was 16 years old, uh, she was diagnosed with a retinus pigment. So I'm going to have her say that later and has experienced progressive um, vision loss over the years. Now, despite her prognosis, she was resilient in creating a vision for her future and determined to live with purpose and follow her dreams. She went on to work for Good Morning America and Entertainment Tonight. She's amazing, had a professional music career and was a top producing realtor in Southern California. Holy smoke, she's amazing. Now today, uh, Nancy hosts, hosts the National Living Full Out show and um, is inspiring ex and is an inspiring example of creating a successful life through determination and pers uh, per positivity. Uh, Nancy believes everyone is capable of overcoming adversities and living full out. Holy smokes, please welcome my amazing, awesome guest, uh, Nance, to the show. So thanks for being on, Nance. Oh, thank you for having me. And I love it. You call me Nance. I like I, it. Oh, yep. is no. that okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. You and my middle sister have been talking. I dig it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, she filled me in on, on yeah, your nicknames, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Nance, I, I wanted, I, I was looking to shorten your uh, bio so we could chat an extra minute or so. But after I looked at it over and over again, I think it's so important for people to know, like, who you are. And even with the diagnosis of the vision loss, all the amazing things that you've gone on to do and continue to do. And I think it was important to just share that in that intro. So I do apologize for it being, you know, a little longer than my usual. Oh no, you're fine. You're yes. fine. I think it was worth it. So, yeah. <laughs> so here, here's my first question. You know, how do you stay positive during times of uncertainty? Kind of like what we're living through in 2020, right? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, uncertain times are always going to come, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. uncertain financial stresses. It might be uncertain health challenges. And then, of course, pandemics, right? It, there could be so many different things. And I, I have to give a little kudos, actually, to my visual impairment because when your vision starts to get more blurry and it becomes harder to see things far away. It's not like I can't keep walking forward in life. I have to take mm. a step. I have to step off the curb. I have to step into traffic. Right. And that's also parallels life. It isn't to say that you can't keep moving forward, that you should just hunker down and, you know, stay inside forever and ever and ever. You have to take right. that step. 
you have to go out there and say, you know what, I'm going to go to a restaurant and it's going to be okay. I'm going to go to my gym. It's going to be okay. You know, you have to trust the, the flow of life is what I'm getting at. So how I stay positive during these times is I literally wake up every day and something positive has to enter my mind. Uh, if I find that the news is not doing it for me, then I will turn on music. Just something's got to take my, my, my body to a, a high vibration. And I believe very much at night also, you know, I don't watch, no, no offense. I don't watch special victims unit, right? Before yes. I go to bed. I yes. FB, good show, but you know, I will listen to something on my, I'll turn TV up all together and I'll listen to something on my phone, whether it be music or something inspirational. I think how you start a day and how you end it is very critical. Everything in between, you know, it's kind of the roll of the dice. That's right. Well, it's funny. And, and I, I'm smiling that you're saying that because in my intro, it was just that. How do you wake up and how do you go to bed? And I do believe that that start and end to every day creates either a positive mindset or that negative mindset, right? The glass half full or empty. And I think yes. it was Wayne Dyer. Um, I, I think in, in Wishes Fulfilled, in his book, Wishes Fulfilled, in one of the chapters, he says, when you go to bed at night, right, you lay your head on the pillow and just start to list all the things you're grateful for, for that day. So you end on a positive note. And he said, he said it could be that cup of coffee this morning was awesome, right? It doesn't have to be that, you know, I made a public speaking event and I was the number one speaker. It doesn't have to be anything grand, but just what were you grateful for? Kind of make the list so you fall asleep percolating on positive, positive energy and, and a positive mindset. And then when you wake up in the morning to start your day before you even drop your feet to the floor, think of three things that you're looking forward to or that you're grateful that's going to happen that day. And that's exactly kind of what you said, right? You start your day with music or meditation or whatever, but you kind of end your day with that positive fulfillment um, as well. And I think that's important because I don't know about you, but the news doesn't do that or provide that. Yeah. And, and it's really about kind of taking your power back from uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. So you can feed the dragon of uncertainty and, and really believe all the falseness of it and the woulda, coulda, shouldas and the what will happen. Or mm -hmm. you can say, you know what, I am going to start my day good. And if there's times in between your day that are not great, I just want everybody to know you can switch your energy. If you're angry or sad, you're never going to go into that shower the same way you come out of it. You're going to feel more refreshed. You're going to feel a little bit higher vibration. Same with going for a walk. You can be so irritated when you hit the ground running, but then you're going to come back just a little bit more depleted of that toxic energy. So even during the day, you can switch up that energy. Give examples of what you do. Let's say, you know, you wake up, you're positive, you're great. And then one thing after another, derail, derail, derail. Oh my God, can't believe that happened. How do you kind of stop it and reframe yourself? Great question. So depending on what it is, uh, for example, the other day, uh, for me, because I'm visually impaired, everything in my world talks. And mm. last Friday, I was having a day where the computer wasn't talking, the phone wasn't talking. I mean, it was off the charts. And I was really starting to feel worried. What if I have to send in the computer? What if mm. all of this doesn't start talking because it's critical to my business and all? But then I calmed myself down. I sat down and I said, listen, let's, let's, let's think this through. You know, there's more people that you can call. It was about, for me, getting resourceful. Yeah. I called Microsoft. I called Dell. I called, you know, as soon as I had that pep talk with myself, I got beyond the limitation of the, of the what if and it's not going to get figured out. And I just went into resourceful mode and it did mm. get figured out. And, and then sometimes you're going to, you're going to, something's going to happen in your day where somebody's going to say something to you that might not settle well. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe I said something wrong. Maybe we just weren't on our, on our game. Right. And it's really easy to take that personally, but, but even that you can rally over. So if someone ever comes to you and they're having a day or they feel disappointed or something like that. Just take that time to take your own stuff away and actually listen to that person. And when you make the other person feel good and you validate what they're saying, now you're having a better day because you kind of gave a gift of listening yeah. that we don't give each other enough. So sometimes secretly when you're having a bad day to just 
put what you got going on aside and then roll yourself into somebody else's day, make it all about them, invest in them, support them. It's about taking the focus off of you, taking the focus off of the anxiety. It's true. And, and you know, what's the old saying? The more you give, the more you get. And that's exactly what you're describing. If you could twist it to kind of park your own crap for that moment and say, wait, this other person is in distress. Let me see how I can help them. Let me listen. Maybe it's just listening to them because they, you know, frustration of something happening at home, right? With, with a family member. Um, again, the more you give, the more you get. So it becomes rewarding because you're not focusing on your crap anymore. And then I, I bet when you do that, Nance, and I, I, I do that too, but when you do that, what you were worried about prior to that shift of, of listening to someone else. Now you look back and you think, well, all right, that really wasn't so bad, right? It, it puts well, it in and perspective. It moves, absolutely. And, and it moves time along because when we're in that party of one, that pity party, or <laughs> when we're in the woes me or worried state of mind, time seems like it's paused. Mm. It seems like it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to speed it along by talking to someone else, doing something differently, taking that walk, taking that shower, you've now done something to advance time 10 minutes later. And that's how you get out of that pity party of one. That's how you get out of that negative toxic cycle is it's just not to let it be this pause of time. And I like how you said that, like sometimes it's going for a walk. My older son, you know, he graduated and was looking for a job and then COVID hit, right? So poor kid <laughs> has a degree and he's, you know, working what he did during the summer, which for me, I'm like, you know what, just go in, you got to do what you got to do, right? So you're not, yeah. you're not too good for any job per se. And he's, he's really enjoying it, right? So, but initially he was very stressed out. So I, said to him, he likes, he likes to run and he likes to work out. He's an exercise kid. I said, go for a walk. We have a beautiful park locally and it's very hilly. So you get a good workout. I said, why don't you go and run the trails? And he did. And he came home and he said, Oh, I feel like a new person. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do his, he was like energized. And so, and then they closed the parks with COVID oh. and yet he's like, mom, what's like, what's happening? I said, you know what? Go walk around the, you know, the neighborhood. Um, so you're still walking outside, but go Going for a walk, you're moving your body, but you're clearing your head because you're still part of nature. Um, that little, little tip is really, really, um, it's excellent. It's an excellent tip for anybody listening where your frustration is off the charts. Just unplug, say, excuse me, and go for a walk outside and you'll see it's, it's such good medicine. It really is such good medicine. Absolutely. Yep. So how do the mantras, you know, ideas of living full out apply um, to this time that we're facing right now, for instance? So it's interesting because um, like we have a lot of mantras at living full out. One of them, you know, letting life layer. And that's one that I think is very interesting because even like your son that you're talking about, right? One layer of his life was school. Mm -hmm. The next layer of this life is how to be resourceful, how to be, how to pivot. Mm -hmm. And then the next layer of his life will be that first career job mm -hmm. and then the next career job. And so it layers on us to all become these really evolved people. So when somebody turns down at the end of their life and they're in their nineties or eighties, they've got stories because they've, they've had all those pivoting points. They've let the life layer of it all. So I think that's a really important one. And even during this pandemic time, it's just a layer of time. It's not, a, it's not a life sentence. I, I believe that very much. It, I believe that we will get past this. It'll look differently, but you know, everything looks differently. You know, every time we go to a war, every time we, you know, we win an achievement, right? Everything's going to look different, right? Um, and then the other one too is celebrate life. I think a lot of times people think that they just celebrate the birthdays and the anniversaries, but I would just celebrate having a good day where nothing goes wrong. <laughs> you know, yes. I would celebrate a really good interview like we're having today. Absolutely. Right? Um, and then uh, the last one I also want to put out there to everyone is kind of reading the road signs because, you know, it's not just in thriller movies when you hear that quiet, haunting music that, you know, you shouldn't go down the dark alley by yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I firmly <laughs> believe that there are signs and sometimes a sign is when things are going south, maybe that's an opportunity to take a half a day off. And re and replenish your body, your your yourself. You know, maybe you know if you're dating someone and 
they're constantly letting you down or you don't really believe what they're saying, maybe it's not the right fit, you know? And, you know, just maybe if you have started a job and it's not going well or a new business, you know, maybe that's not the right fit either. So it's kind of reading those road signs of life. Yeah. And I think it was Oprah. She said that the universe talks to you. It's, it depends if you're listening. So it starts like, she, and I think she does it in a very jokingly way and loving way. But she said, initially it kind of whispers. And if you don't ignore it, it starts yelling. And if you don't ignore it, it takes a two by four and hits you upside your head so that you go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And that's kind of the essence of what you're saying, right? We have to kind of listen to what's going on in our life, because it really is a guide, whether we're living the, the path we should be living, or are we taking the easy way out, or are we taking too much on? And, and before you just said, um, being kind to yourself, like taking that half day off, I, I need to, I need just when you said that, I thought, mm, that very, very wise words, my friend, Nancy, oh. <laughs> um, because I don't practice that self-love and that self-care it's do more. They need you go and do that. You know what? You could rest later. You don't need to sleep. Go and handle that. Your, your sister needs you. Your mom needs you. This one needs you. And I give and give and give and give because I think what's the big deal. I can do it. But what happens is I deplete myself to the point where I'm worn out and that's dangerous because now what happens, right? You're not good for anybody, whether it's your business, your, your job, your family, we become almost like a useless, um, component because we, we have it fortified our own, um, energy and our own, own, uh, like uh, person. So I am, it's funny that you said that. And I, I really have to work on that Nance because I really do, um, not practice self-love and that's bad. It's bad. Well, and I, and I firmly believe in the power of music, putting together a playlist or if you have music on your TV or whatever, play it because songs have such great impact on us too. If you're a Journey fan, don't stop believing, right? Yeah, if that's you're right. a Kelly Clarkson fan, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. That's Tim true. McGraw, live like you were dying. Or, yeah. you know, maybe Garth Brooks, unanswered prayers, right? Because sometimes there's things we think we really want, and when they don't work out, we see later down in life, we're glad it didn't, right? That's so right. I think picking kind of almost like a theme song for your day, a theme song for your life, and but having those go-tos to pull you out of those hard days. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, and you know, music really is for the soul. Mm -hmm. It is. You feel it at the soul. I, at least I hear when I hear music, it moves me sometimes to the point of tears, depending on what the song is. When you start listening to words, you know, the lyrics of a song, they could bring you to tears. And I mean, tears of joy because it just strikes a chord um, in your soul. Right. It's, it's moving. It's that moving. So you mentioned the business, a business before. If you're a business owner, or you're looking to start a business. What advice do you have for anyone who's maybe thinking, especially during this time, to start a business? Like, what, what have you learned that you uh, can share? Well, number one, the power of team. And I mean, that is from assistants to IT people to accountants to attorneys to every bit of it. You have to find people that believe in you. You have to find people that believe in the vision. Mm -hmm. And I always go and I search three people and I interview them and I see who I think is going to resonate with the company. I mean, I don't expect everyone to be working as long hours as I do per se, right, but, right. but, but at the same time, you know, I think, you know, building a corporate culture is important. So you got to think about what is the personality of your business? What is the voice of your business? You know, yes, what is the end game? Meaning when, what are you building it for? Is it something to pass along to others or one day sell? But, but there's a lot of components to it. And when you have all that in, in alignment, yes, some businesses take longer to get to their point of thriving and others blow up right away. But yeah. it, it's, it's that, you know, it's, it's kind of that, you know, fast start, fast finish, right? So yeah. It's okay that things take a long time, but building a team has been critical for me and really in more ways than one. I mean, my team are my eyes. They tell me how the website looks. They tell me how marketing looks. They tell me so many things, the layout of a, a room that I might be speaking in, hmm. but everybody's business is going to be different. And I think it's good when you make it a community feel, then people are more proud of, of kind of contributing in their part. And that's so well said, you know, aside from the, the vision, right, impairment, we, I don't care what business you're in, I don't care what you're creating or what industry you're in, 
You can't do it alone. It's impossible because one per, as one person, you can't possibly have all the resources needed, knowledge needed, expertise needed to do all of the things that you need to do in a business like websites, social media, all those things. So if you're a really good accountant, you probably aren't going to be a good web designer or a social media um, expert. So we, we, I think, I think business owners, we tend to think I could do it. I could save money. I could do it myself. I'm intelligent, which is all true. But I think you have to look at, is it worth the time that you're willing to put into that where you could be doing your business, making money? It's usually cheaper to hire somebody and build that team that you just described um, to mm-hmm. let them do like stay in your lane, right? Let them do their expertise. You create the business and the revenue and the uh, exposure faster by building a team. And I think you're really good at that. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I, two things I've always done and I will always do this is I believe in taking time with my, with my people, with my team. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe it's not right when they start, maybe it's more towards the end of their day, but kind of a check-in, you know, how are you doing? Or, you know, paying attention to when their voice may be at a lower vibration than normal. Is Mm. everything okay? Or if they're having a really good day and they're giddy, I'll be like, well, what did you have for breakfast today? You are on fire. You know, and and I'm constantly looking for the highs and the lows of my team. And then, you know, the other thing, too, is building camaraderie. When we have team meetings, we will do questions like, if you had a superpower, what would it be, right? It's just breaking up the work and having fun. I think people forget to have fun, you know, businesses, relationships. You know, it's, it's about having that good time, which is true because we spend more time working than we do. And I'm going to use the word play life, right? Which, which is when you're home with family that you could kind of chill and, and relax and, you know, go out to dinner, whatever it is. Well, maybe not go out to dinner lately, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Outdoor dining, <laughs> outdoor only, dining, yeah. right. Or outdoor <laughs> takeout. Uh, right. But we spend more time at work. So if you're not enjoying yourself at work, maybe it's time to rethink, is this the right work for you? If you're having more bad days than good days, maybe like we said before, the universe is tapping you saying, hmm, maybe now's the time for you to shift and pivot and create something new in your life. Right. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think people have to be at all. You know, I mean, that's the mistake that a lot of people run into. You know, they feel like they have to be the accountant. They have to be, you know, the writer. They have to be the marketer. And you don't. You can delegate it out. It's about knowing what is your lane. You know, where do you where do you have the most fun? Where do you feel like you contribute the most? I mean, I definitely know my lane. No one needs me, the blind girl doing IT. <laughs> you know, um, you know, there's just certain things that I am not going to be the one they're going to go to, right? No one needs me doing the website, right? Um, you know, so I, I know where I belong within this company and I stay in that lane. And also I think it's sometimes knowing when to let go, when to let go of a business, when to let go of a job, when to let go of a relationship. Because truly, the things that are meant to be right in our life, they shouldn't be work. Yeah. They, I mean, I mean, there's going to be good days and bad days, but it's that kind of unconditional love, finding your purpose, you know, all of those things that are just meant to be, that are in you. It's true. I have a friend who published a book uh, the beginning of 2020, and I was in the throes of publishing my book, which I have since published. But um, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And someone I had met through networking online because of COVID, right? I was going to networking and I, she lives out in St. Louis or something. And I mentioned about, oh, now I have this book project. And she says, oh, do you have a publisher? I'm like, no. And she says, oh, you need to talk to. So I'm like, okay, that day did an intro email. So this was probably about eight weeks ago. I met the woman who introduced me to a PR firm and the book launched um, in, in July, July 16th the book launched within five hours, Nance, it was a number one best-selling author in the U S and by the wow. next day, an international best-selling author. So, and I'm not doing that to Preg. please don't take that. I'm trying to make my point here. Had I not spoken about, I have this project, I don't know the next step. So when you talk about what you need or what you're not sure that you need, inevitably you're having a conversation with the right person or the person who Uh, could connect you to the right person. The universe kind of puts it right smack dab in your path. And literally within five weeks, 
they pulled everything together and that PR firm. And it was funny because recently someone said to me, so who did you use or how do, do you mind sharing how you did it? And I share anything, Nancy. You have a question. I was successful at something. I'll share it. I'll show you, right? I want everybody to be successful. You share the wealth. And I said to her, well, I'll give you the person's name. I did absolutely nothing. She gave me the emails. I used her emails. She said, post on this day at this time. I posted on that day at that time. Wow. I stayed in my lane. She's the expert, right? That's the kind of thing we're talking about, that you have to trust people to do what they do. And that's when the magic happens. But if I were saying, no, 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 I don't think that email reads right. I think we need to say this, to be, the, be in control of something I know nothing about. I don't know that the results would have been the same, right? Absolutely. And it's so funny you say that. Even my engineer on the Living Full Out show, he and I duked it out recently because I was I was trying to think of the whole big picture because behind the scenes of our show, we videotape it as well and put it out there in social media land. And so I was trying to picture the mic and the picture and the best sound quality and all that. And he was like, well, what do you want more? Your face in the whole shot or do you want to sound good? And I'm like, sound good. And he goes, okay, well, there's going to be some mic in your shot that I had to release it and give it over because he knows better than <laughs> You know what I mean? Exactly. And again, who needs me, you know, calling visual shots, right? I'm not exactly, exactly the expert there. So, yeah. so I love that you and I both have those examples. And I just think it's one of those things where when you're able to trust other people, give it over, delegate, uh, when you're able to be a little bit, and this is hard for me to say because I am a planner, a mm, little bit more go too. with the flow. Yeah. Then, then magical things can happen. But if you are, you know, it's got to be this way you know, type A all the time, then, you know, you will never know what could have been. Yeah. It's, it becomes a very slippery slope. I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because I am a planner. My husband laughs. I have like a one day, one week, one year, three year, nine year, 10 year plan. <laughs> and I'll say something. He goes, are we looking 10 years out or 20 years out? I'm like, wait, let me think about that. You know, how do you not have a plan? That's, that's how I was raised. That's my thought process. That's how I roll. Right. But there yeah. are times where you're exactly right surrender and surrendering for my control freaks out there. I like control too, but you have to learn when to surrender. It's not an easy thing to learn, but you have to do it. Um, because mm -hmm. that, and I love how you said that that's when the magic really does happen. All right. So yep. I, have, I have a really uh, important question to ask you, looking back on your life now, what do you wish that like, if you could turn back time, what would you have done differently? So if I could go back in time, I think I would have, I think I would have actually, I wish I had known what I know now, even from a business perspective, mm. I think I would have saved myself a little bit of heartbreak relationship wise. I think I would have saved myself a little bit of, well, I would have saved a lot more money <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> building a business, trying in different endeavors, they all cost money, right? Yep. Um, you know, but the funny thing is you can't go back and when I do an interview with you and, and, and other shows and I talk about the challenges I've had, a financial stress or, you know, on a personal note, you know, breakups or miscarriages or divorces or whatever, you know, all of those things, I, you, I can't be who I am. My heart, my soul, my mind, my wisdom can't be who I am without those heartbreaks. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting twist because you wish you could go back in time and do it all over and make less mistakes and have more fun or whatever. But again, you can't have it both ways. And, you know, I recently uh, had a coaching session with a client uh, who is now on her third divorce. Wow. And, and she was very in the throes of woes me and made bad decisions. And, but honestly, she's, I think she's amazing. And I think each guy taught her something about herself. And now it's less about a relationship and more about her own personal journey. So I think as everybody listens today, my whole take on it is you are the main character in your story. Everybody else are supporting characters. You write the novel. You right. write how it goes. That's right. You're at a hundred percent agree. Um, it's funny because, um, as you were saying that, you know, I look back and I think, gosh, I wish I had saved more money. I wish I had sold my house sooner. I wish I had done um, this or that sooner. But all of those lessons learned 
help you now. And it's funny when I, I started my business when I was 39 and when I meet young entrepreneurs or young business owners and I try to share and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they know. And I think you're on your journey. I'm going to back off. Like, see again, stay in your lane because I know now what I didn't know, you know, 20 years ago. And it's just really interesting when I speak to younger people, but they have to make their own mistakes. My kids, right? My kids are 21 and 24. They have to make their own mistakes. And, and it's hard. It's hard to watch people make a mistake that, you know, they could bypass or, or, um, like shorten the path, right? Shorten the road, the, the path to whatever the success or, or outcome is. So it's life is not always easy, but it, I agree. The journey is where it's wonderful. That's the journey. The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Makes us who we are. So, so well said. Yeah, agree. What, what do you think inspires you to, to just keep going every day? Well, it, it's actually interesting uh, due to this whole like pandemic and knowing that there were people that did not survive. And then yeah. you look at people, I'll just say celebrities who die young too, and, and of different conditions or death, uh, drugs or yeah. whatever, or mysterious causes, right? Yes. Yes. And, and what I've learned is that life, we're not, you know, we're here for only so long and when we're not going to be here, we don't know. And I can cry over my vision loss or I can just get out there and experience life with all the other senses I do have smell, sound, touch, you name it. Right. Yep. I can work long, long, long days, or I can say, you know what, I'm going to give it all today, but you know what? I am taking Saturday off. I am going to live full out. You know, I can cry over relationships that I wish had worked. Right. Or I can say, you know what? I wonder what's behind door number three. Right. right. And so right. I don't, I would rather feel butterflies in my stomach. I would rather feel sweaty palms. I'd rather sit on the edge of my seat of life than to have the woulda, coulda, shouldas or the, that stuck zone. Yep. Yep. It's true. It's really true. And, and so for you, what inspires you or what keeps you moving is, is really the unknown, right? The butterflies, the new experience tomorrow. Um, I am on a, a show, uh, actually tomorrow I'm going to be recording with someone else. I'm, I'm the guest, which was, is, which is interesting, right? Cause you're a podcast host too. Yes. The different sides of the mics quite interesting, right? So to yes. be on the guest side. Um, and she, she asked me what are songs that you like and inspire you? And I thought, Oh, like it was so easy, such an easy answer. Natasha Bedingfield, um, unwritten, right? Tomorrow's unwritten. It's your book, write what you want. You could create anything you want. I so believe that. And the other one is, it's an old one. I'm dating myself, but Robert Palmer, all kinds of people. And with everything oh, okay. go, isn't that another good one? But that is another good one. Everything that that's going on. We're all at the core. Our blood is the same. Our intestines are the same. We're really all the same. So why don't we go and say, hey, just what we're creating, what we're talking about creating in our business, right? Bringing in people that, that support us. I need all kinds of people in my life. I don't just want the people like Connie Whitman in the world to be in my orbit. I want that diversity, right? I embrace that diversity. So yeah, it was just such an interesting question being on the other side and, and pausing and thinking, what does inspire me? What are the songs that kind of are my aha moments? So well, um, and and the thing that's so interesting is the first question you asked me was how do I get through these uncertain times? Yes. But as we round out our interview here, then the last question: What inspires me are the uncertain times. Yes. You know, so even during this time, this is when living full out my company. We've we've dug in. We've birthed new projects. We've cleaned up what needed to be. Yep. You know, this is when you reconnect with people you haven't talked to by phone in a yes. long time because everybody's home. <laughs> this right. is when you have that quality time at home playing Jenga or watching Netflix, right? So in some ways, it's the uncertain times that do bring me the most joy. It's true. You just mm -hmm. have to pay attention to it, Nance. I, I think, yep. you know, like you said, you took advantage. And I did the same thing with my company, right? I'm creating a whole nother division, right? I published the book. So I took advantage of the downtime. But the byproduct every night, my son was home from college. My other son was here. We had dinner every night. One mm -hmm. wasn't going to the girlfriend. My husband wasn't running here. I was running to a networking event. 
we were home for dinner every night for that period mm-hmm. of time. We had so much fun. We had great conversations. Even after dinner was done, we sat around the kitchen table and just BS a little bit. It's been a long time as a family that we were able to do that because our schedules are our schedules, right? And I don't want to, I don't want to hold them back from living their their life, living full out. Um, so I don't want to say, well, you shouldn't be with your girlfriend. You should have dinner with us. No, he should be with his girlfriend, right? That's normal stuff. So yeah, I agree. You find the opportunity, no matter what the unknown or what tomorrow brings. Find find the opportunity and the goodness in it. Yeah, well said. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So guys, I know you need more Nancy in your life. So here's the deal. And I do highly recommend, number one, you check out her um, website, which is livingfullout.com and or connect with her email her at connect at livingfullout.com and what's the name of your your show is living full out right it is yes yeah, the national living full out show uh-huh and, and it, it's and on they can, go ahead well it's on spreaker but actually uh you can go if you have alexa echo you can search living full out in your skills or you can go nice. to the app store and look for living full out radio nice. if you want to be on the go on that walk listening to us so yeah it's a great show and you can call in and you can talk to me live i love it and you just give such great advice and information and I feel like um, you are living full out. I think you are the epitome of that, that whole kind of phraseology of your business. You live and breathe it, which I think is so awesome to find someone who created something and actually lives it. It's not, it's not, it's authentic. And I started yeah. with that in your, in, with the uh, bio, you're passionate, but you're really authentic in the real deal. And the first time we, somebody introduced us, your PR person, I'm not really sure when your book came out. And right, you and I, we hit it yeah. off immediately because I think philosophically we're, we're just so similar um, with, with how we live. We live full out. And I think that's just an awesome uh, phraseology. So check out my good friend Nance at livingfullout.com. Uh, again, check out her show um, on you know all of the platforms, livingfullout.com, her podcast, and learn uh, a thing or two, right? And to be inspired every day. I think that's, that's a cool way to live. Um, I am also still offering the free communication style assessment. Please feel free um, to go to whitmanassos.com slash CSA, communication style assessment. Additionally, I am going to be offering fairly frequently a new masterclass I'm creating based on my book, ESP, Easy Sales Process, Seven Steps to Sales Success. So join me. You might be a great candidate for that. I'd love to explore that with you. All the details, again, are on WhitmanAssos.com. Check it out. Um, Nance, thanks again for being on, for being such a great guest, and just always for inspiring me. Um, Mm. I enjoy our time today. I feel like my vibration always changes with you. It's wonderful. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. Live full out, everyone. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Live full out. God (laughs) darn it, right? That's right. (laughs) I love it. Um, And I hope you guys will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover together that no matter what change that you have in your life, I hope my guests and myself provide tips, ideas that you can implement now, today, Listen to music, go for that walk, whatever it is for you to create and inspire whatever your unwritten tomorrow brings you. So thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman, on webtalkradio.net. I wish you all truly an inspired week. Do something differently. Just try one little step forward and see what magic happens. Thanks, Nance. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.